As promised, another month has gone by. It's a little hotter, and I'm going to continue my investigation into Phantom Drain. When I did my uh, test last month uh, on how much energy I would lose due to cabin overheat protection and sentry mode being turned on in this Tesla Model 3, I messed up and I didn't get sentry mode turned off correctly for the first part of the day. Uh, and it gave me a weird result. Uh, when I got home, the difference in lost energy was really only one mile over a 60 plus mile commute uh, that I do on a daily basis. Uh, I didn't feel like I gave a good result, so I wanted to do it again. It's a little hotter now. It's about 10 degrees hotter now in May than it was in April here in North Texas. Uh, but since I know what I'm doing now as far as turning sentry mode off, um, we should have better results. So I'm gonna rewind back to yesterday when I started this test, and we'll have the results at the end of the video. Day number one, I learned from the last one to keep this morning shot short because of low light. So I'm just gonna show you on the screen that we are at a 100% state of charge with 258 miles projected, and we are off. <laughs> is over at day one i'm there let's take a look at the stats according to the trip card 27 miles 42 minutes five kilowatt hours of energy used with an average efficiency of 191 watt hours per mile if i go up here to the top you'll see that it is currently 75 degrees at 7 15 a.m tomorrow's weather is going to be a similar it's going to be a little bit warmer by about three degrees according to the forecast that i've read on uh, weatherbug uh, but today just like the first test is going to be my baseline i'm going to park the car put the sunshade in the windshield and leave sentry mode turned on and leave cabin overheat protection turned on so that it does not allow the car to get above 100 degrees in the interior. I have a short uh, drive across town in the middle of my workday, so there are going to be some miles added on to this. I'll give you an update on the trip card when I leave to uh, go on my way home and I'll give you an update when I get to the house to see exactly how much range I've lost. It is now the end of the workday and I'm on my way home. Uh, I did have to do my drive across town and so I'm gonna give you an update on the stats. It got really warm today and I've lost a good amount of range uh, sitting in the parking lot. So let's first off take a look at the trip card. Total miles so far today on since my charge when I left home 35 miles, so I've added eight miles to what I had this morning, but nine kilowatt hours of electricity. I'm up to 246 watt hours per mile. I was under 200 when the day started. Part of that is it's 96 degrees according to my Tesla screen, but um, my watch says 87. I don't know if you can see that. I have 205 miles of projected range and 79% uh, state of charge. That means since I got to work, I've lost more than 10% of my battery and I've uh, only driven another eight miles. If I take the miles that I've driven, 235, and add them to my projected range, that's a total of 240, which when I left home this morning at 100% state of charge, it was 258. So that means that today I've lost 18 miles of range while I was at work. Realistically, I lost 20 because I was two miles to the good when I got to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive home uh, and see what this works out to in the end. Then tomorrow I'll compare it. Now I might get some weird readings on the way home because there is quite a bit of a traffic jam on the freeway here right now. Uh, so we'll see what it's like to get through that. I'll give you an update on the stats for the end of day one when I get home. Thank you. 
And I'm home to bring an end to day one of the trip. That traffic jam was just a big rig with a blown tire in the left lane coming up on a construction zone, it kind of bottled everything up. Let's look at the trip card to see where we're at at the end of day one. Today was 61 miles. We used 15 kilowatt hours of energy for an average efficiency of 245 watt hours per mile. That's just gonna be a hair over four miles per kilowatt hour. The afternoon drive was 265 watt hours per mile. So lost a lot of efficiency because of the heat. The car's internal, uh, the car's thermometer says it's 90 degrees but my watch says 88. So it just, it took a while for the car to, to normalize. We have 173 miles of projected range. We got home with a 67% state of charge. So let's take a look at how the math adds up. 173 miles of projected range remaining and I used 61 miles. So that's gonna be 234, right? Yeah, 234 miles total between the range that's projected and how much I drove. So when I left 258 miles of projected range and now I'm at 234, that means sitting at work with cabin overheat and sentry mode and the extra loss of efficiency on my drive home because of the heat, I lost 24 miles of range. Now, last month when I did this, it wasn't quite as warm and when I did day two without sentry mode and cabin overheat protection, when I turned those off, the car was considerably hotter when I got into it. And I really only used one less mile of projected range because the AC, it, this is my theory, had to work so hard to cool the car back down when I left to drive home in the afternoon. So tomorrow I'm gonna replicate that and see if that result is the same. If it's gonna be about the same loss of 24 miles from the projection, or really 26, because it was two miles over. I'll see you in the morning. We're at the start of day two, let's check out the stats. It is currently 76 degrees. We're at 258 miles of projected range and a 100% state of charge and our trip card, since the charge is saying zero, it's going to be a little bit warmer today, but today I'm going to turn off sentry mode and I'm going to turn off cabin overheat protection, possibly even vent the windows a little bit and see if I lose less range. Uh, so I think it was what, 24 miles I lost yesterday. Gonna open up the, th the display, go into safety, come up here and turn sentry mode off. Scroll down to cabin overheat protection and turn it off. And now we're ready to go. So I'll give you an update when I get to work. End of the work commute, uh, going to work on day two. So let's take a look at the stats on the trip card. Just like yesterday, 27 miles, five kilowatt hours of energy and 196 watt hours per mile is the average efficiency, which is just a hair over five miles per kilowatt hour. We have 234 miles of projected range and we're at a 91% state of charge. The 234 miles, plus the 27 is gonna add up to 261. So that's three more miles of range than when I left, when I had 258 projected. So I've gained three miles. Now with uh, cabin overheat turned off and sentry mode turned off, how much am I gonna lose throughout the day? It is gonna be warm, but there is the threat of thunderstorms in the area today. So I'm not going to vent the windows, even though I could uh, close them remotely. I don't have the best cell service where I work, so uh, I, that's not necessarily a guarantee. And I also don't want to ping the car during the middle of the day like that. So uh, the windows are going to kind of stay up. Uh, so not going to have that test on this one, but it's going to give me a more accurate test of how much energy does the cabin overheat protection really take? Uh, so I'll give you an update later today. It is the end of the work day and it is warm. Right, let's take, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. Right now the car says 95 degrees outside. My watch says 92, and the Tessie app says the interior of the car was 132 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I'm now showing 213 miles of projected range. I'm at an 83% state of charge, which is a higher state of charge than yesterday. I've got 35 miles, because that includes my across town trek. Uh, nine kilowatt hours, less than yesterday. 35 miles plus 213. That means that right now I'm at 248. So I've lost 10 miles off of this morning's projection, which when I got to work, I'd actually, I was ahead of that but I'm just gonna remember the 258. Um, that's where I started. Right now I'm at 248, I've lost 10. I don't think I'm gonna lose another 14, even though the AC is working hard right now to cool the car off. Um, I think this is gonna be a greater difference than just the one mile difference I had last month. And I'm wondering if a lot of that has to do with getting sentry mode turned off correctly starting at the beginning of the day and not getting those five or six entry notifications. Yes, I park by a sidewalk, people walk by the car. It catches them. So anyway, I'm gonna head home and give you the final report. While I'm home, it, uh, it's still warm, uh, but and we didn't have the big traffic jam that we had yesterday. So let's take a look at the trip card. Total drive was 64 miles, used 17 kilowatt hours, with an average efficiency of 271 watt hours per mile. I have 173 miles of projected range. We're home with 67% state of charge. It is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't remember what my percentage was yesterday, but that's pretty close. Uh, my, I do remember that uh, projected range plus the miles that I drove yesterday was 234 miles, meaning I lost 24 miles of range. 173 plus 64 is gonna be 237 miles, which means today I lost 21 miles of range. It's a difference of three miles, and today, I did in fact have sentry mode turned off the correct way all day. I had cabin overheat turned off the whole day. There was a threat of thunderstorms or under a tornado watch right now. So for that reason, I didn't crack my windows. The Tesla, when you uh, vent the windows, it vents them down pretty low. Uh, so I didn't do that. Might I have kept the car below 132 degrees Fahrenheit if I had done that? Man, I hope so. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was quite warm in here. and. My belief is that the air conditioner had to work so much harder uh, to cool the car down once I started driving that it ate up a, almost all of the energy that I saved by not having cabin overheat project, uh, protection turned on. Um, so it's a three mile difference. Uh, this time around, it was a one mile difference last time uh, with cooler temperatures, probably about 10 degrees cooler. Uh, my conclusion is for my daily commute at least, I'm going to keep uh, cabin overheat protection and sentry mode turned on. I am going to. Uh, three miles, it's less than one kilowatt hour. It's less than a quarter, less than 25 cents of energy on a daily basis for me to not have to get into a car that's over 100 degrees when I get into it. So I'm going to keep cabin overheat protection turned on. I've kept sentry mode turned on, uh, even though nobody's messed with my car. Uh, but just in case somebody does or somebody opens a door into it or something like that, I'd like to see it. I'd like to catch them. So I'm going to keep sentry mode turned on as well. It does use a little bit of energy, but not as much as you would think. Now, maybe if I did this test in cooler temperatures where I didn't have to worry about the car getting over 100 degrees, then maybe it would make a bigger difference. That's my only guess. But right now with the temperatures that we have in late spring in North Texas, uh, it's not enough of a savings to make me want to do it. That's what my conclusion is. And having a very similar result to what I had last month, I'm getting a little bit more on a conclusive test. So um, thank you for watching. Thanks for coming back to this video. If you saw the video from last month, I'll link it down in the description and all of that. Um, getting ready to getting close on having some time off and I'm going to have some uh, other test videos that you guys have been asking for uh, coming up in the in the coming months so uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, already and thank you for watching